to start off with, I want to show you something that happened at the weekend. I promised to tell you how much I paid. It's so tempted, but we walked away. I want it so much now that I feel that I probably should be there just in case it goes beyond my reserve. I'm not even asking Mark about this one. I'm leaving a bid. A little different than all the rest. To start off with, I want to show you something that happened at the weekend. So this is what Mark and I went to look at on Sunday. Please excuse the voiceover here. I had problems with our microphone on Sunday, so none of our conversations were recorded. But we headed back to Luz's because I wanted to show Mark the unit that I saw the other week, which really took my fancy. This marble topped mirrored cupboard could make a really lovely towel cupboard. And it's £325, so not bad. It would fit. I really like it. Is it deep enough for towels? It's really pretty and it really goes with the whole bathroom aesthetic. Looking around at other things and measuring up, it really became apparent that it's the marble and the mirror that really floats our boat. So we had a good look around, couldn't see anything else and really mulled over whether that was the right cupboard for us. We're also questioning whether a built-in cupboard would be better. Decisions, decisions. Obviously, when we are in Norwich, we had a good wander around and we love this building. Look at that door within a door. So cute. And before heading home, we went to Piglet in bed and look at those towels and this blanket too. They're perfect for my interiors. It was really lovely and we were so tempted, but we walked away because although £325 is a brilliant price, we just didn't think that we could justify it at the moment. Now we're getting to the really exciting part. I was looking on James Beck's Facebook auction page and you will never believe what I saw. I couldn't believe it myself. The cupboard in Loses has a twin. This is almost identical. It's actually in a slightly better condition than the other one because the marble isn't cracked on top. I can't believe this. We'd actually decided earlier in the week to put in a built-in cupboard, but now this has come up. Surely this is fate. It has to be, doesn't it? I'm not even asking Mark about this one. I'm leaving a bid. This is such an exciting day. I just can't believe it. I've left quite a good bid, so I really think I've left enough to secure it. So fingers crossed. Anyway, I'll give you a quick walk around the rest of the auction just to see if there's anything else that takes my fancy. Doesn't seem to be a lot here today, but that's how it goes. Sometimes there's more than others. After all this excitement, I need to go home and have a very big cup of green tea. Right, it's Thursday, it's auction day and I'm back in Fakenham. I don't need to pop into the auction, but I do feel very excited. Um, I left a bid yesterday, but I might pop in and see what um, actually goes on. I want it so much now that I feel that I probably should be there just in case it goes beyond my reserve but I have left a very generous bid on so fingers crossed so let's go and take a look around the antique market I think only the indoor space will be active today because it's so grim out there but uh, let's go and see what we can find gosh it's quiet in here today there's hardly anybody around oh well at least I can have a good look now let's take a look So 
always get excited at the sight of the 40 pence boxes. And now moving on to this store where I bought Imogen's miniature birthday candelabra from the other week. Unfortunately, they don't have another one. I would have snapped that up too. And here we are back at the auction. Oh, I feel really excited, but full of dread as well. I just really want to get this. There it is, just one last look before the auction starts. It doesn't look too busy today. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. This is the lot before mine. And here we go. <gasps> Will I get it? Oh, thank goodness I've left a bid. I get so nervous. Oh, what an adrenaline rush. I've just got that unit. For a lot cheaper than the 325 I saw in the Antique Emporium so how exciting piece of furniture for the bathroom but anyway look I just want to show you this amazing wall and moss isn't that fantastic right I've got to go home now I'm freezing so time for a cup of tea at home I've just got in and thought that I would check out the paint swatches that I put on the wall I put three up in different areas that's looking nice. So that's Baron Ball Yee Bridge, I think it was called. Let's have a look at the others. So there's one on the back wall. In the video, that's looking quite pea green, but actually it's not looking that bright in natural daylight. It's looking really nice though. And here it is on the other wall. You really can't get the proper idea through the camera lens. It's looking quite a dark green and it's really not. I'm really liking this. Oh, can you hear the kettle in the background? Let me go and switch that off. There was another green contender and that was Edward Bulmer, Invisible Green. Probably on camera they look quite similar, but the Edward Bulmer Invisible Green just looks, that does look more pea green. Where this one is more on the sort of dark lavender leaves, those sort of hues. So definitely discounting that one in this room it's a fantastic color and now on to one of the things that I bought in Fakenham this morning this was actually a charity shop purchase and it was this gorgeous tin I'm definitely going through a green phase look at how wonderful they go together so when I'm pulling an interior scheme together and if I'm drawn to little objects when I'm out and about I pick them up because I find it really helps to sort of put them next to the scheme and then you can really see it all building up so this may never end up actually in the bedroom but it's great inspiration isn't that cute bluebird toffees toffee made in england what an exciting day before i show you what i bought out and about in fakenham today i just wanted to show you this it's funny, isn't it, how once you tune into a colour, it just appears anywhere. So last night, my friend gave me a big pile of House and Garden magazines, which I'm very grateful for. And I was just flicking through it. And look at that. That's a Ben Pentreef Morris design. And the colours are pink and green, obviously. And it's called Willow Bough. Isn't that beautiful? And I just couldn't believe it when I held up the paint that I like and uh, that's absolutely spot on so that's just really cemented the thought about pink green and burgundy even more so I'm very happy about that I don't think I'll be having wallpaper in my own bedroom but um, that is very pretty I'll show you one more time right so moving on 
to what I bought in the auction. So I've already showed you this. That was from a charity shop. And then I bought this. It's a bit cloudy. I'm assuming somebody has put that through a dishwasher. I um, have tried to clean it and it won't come up any cleaner. I'll have to see if I can do anything about that. I'll have to do a bit of research. If you do know how to remove cloudiness from glass, please tell me. But anyway, I love collecting these because I use them for vases, as you can see there. So I've already got that one. Now my new one, slightly larger one and an even larger one again. This shape, this size is brilliant for tulip. So that's going to come into its own very shortly because we're moving into tulip season. Wouldn't this one be lovely with a single red rose in it on Valentine's Day? I'm not expecting one. I've never received a single red rose for Valentine's Day. Mark and I aren't very romantic in that respect. Um, but nevertheless, that would look nice with a single stem in. And uh, yeah, they're just brilliant. So that was two pounds. That was a pound, so three pound in total, which is just incredible, which in US dollars is just under four dollars, I believe. So very happy with that. Now, yesterday when I went to the auction viewing, I had a quick scoot around the charity shops of Fakenham. I bought this little brooch for two pounds. And well, first of all, I don't know about you, but I find that sometimes charity shops are getting a bit silly with their prices. I'm an antique dealer and sometimes charity shops are selling their wares for more than I am selling them for on my own website, which is just crazy. You see a Wedgwood vase or something and it's mega money. But anyway, so I can feel a bit frustrated that I can't find the things that I want for my own home at a sensible price. But then look at this. The charity shop obviously didn't know that they had in their possession a piece of 1920s French porcelain. And oh gosh, it's just a thing of beauty. I actually have a cupboard in my kitchen which I just want to fill with white and cream porcelain. I've got a, quite a few bits already. And oh, I just love that. Look at it. So that cost me the grand total of four pounds, which is just over five US dollars. Just love it. I, I could never sell that. That's just so beautiful. Right, finally, I promised to tell you how much I paid for the unit in the auction. It's been delivered. It hasn't arrived yet, so I can't show it to you again, but it, I couldn't believe it. So the hammer price was £65, which means after fees, I paid 81 25 So that's a quarter of the price that I would have paid in the Antique Emporium. It was 325 in the Antique Emporium and I've just paid 81 25 It's a good day. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little bit of antiquing in midweek antiquing and um, I will see you again next week. Bye for now.